Welcome to our journey into the world of hyperglycemic emergencies. Today, we'll explore two critical conditions, diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA, and hyperglycemic hyperosmolar syndrome, HHS. Let's dive in and see how these conditions affect the body. There is a critical deficit in the action of insulin, resulting in hyperglycemia. Both HHS and DKA are due to insulin deficiency. Counter-regulatory hormones glucagon, catecholamines, cortisol and growth hormone are released. The hyperglycemia in DKA is the result of three events. 1. Increased gluconeogenesis. 2. Increased glycogenolysis. And 3. Decreased glucose utilization. DKA there is increased lipolysis and ketogenesis. While DKA is a state of near-absolute insulin openia, there is sufficient amount of insulin present in HHS to prevent lipolysis and ketogenesis, but not adequate to cause glucose utilization. In addition, in HHS, there is a smaller increase in counter-regulatory hormones. An older child or teenager looking severely dehydrated and confused possibly vomiting and experiencing abdominal pain. Diagnosing these conditions involves checking blood glucose levels, pH, and osmolarity. In DKA, blood glucose is 200 millimolars DL with acidosis and ketonuria. HHS shows blood glucose, 600 millimolars DL, high osmolarity, and no significant acidosis or ketosis. Sometimes patients can present with mixed DKA HHS symptoms. Children can get HHS. If your glucose is a bit higher than your typical DKA and the corrected sodium is elevated, calculate your osmolarity. 